What's up, Street Thugs? Brig here. And we're going to kind of go over a nice little resource for game development called Fontstruct. Now, when I was making my board game, I had to create a few fonts. I tried finding a way to do this online. There had to have been something, and there was a few options. Some of them a little tricky. One of them looked like it had a lot of, of neat things you could do with it, but it was almost like you had to master trigonometry to do it. And I... I was no good at trigonometry. I was good at brigonometry, but not trigonometry. So I did a little bit more research and I found Fontstruct. Fontstruct is a really neat system because it uses bricks. So you're pretty much just stacking bricks to create your font, which is really neat. Very simple to use, but there's a lot of things that aren't made clear with Fontstruct. Different little tips and tricks, more advanced tools that are not readily available and they're really hard to find. There is a help system within Fontstruct that will show you some of them if you look hard enough to find them. Unfortunately, there's no videos available that I could find that actually go over these. So I'm gonna go over these with you, kind of show them to you really pretty quickly and give you an idea so that you can really go the extra mile for creating your fonts. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into my Fontstruct and we're gonna create a new font. And then you can name your design um, let's name this one, uh, I'm just going to name it video for the video. Easy enough. And so here you got, here you got your, your main screen here. This is, uh, kind of like a graph paper start building here. Now controls are a little bit different than almost all programs really. Um, Zoom out is zooming in and out is pretty standard. Um, you have a pencil, eraser. You know, you can make multiple blocks. These are pretty standard. You can make a line and you can move it. These are pretty standard. Now you can't scroll left or right, up and down. You have to use this hand to get around. So you are limited right there. Um, so if you want to kind of jump around, you gotta you gotta actually move it yourself. Um, another function is there hotkeys. If you want to copy something and paste something, you do not use Control C and Control V. You just simply use C and V. Uh, there, there's a whole mess of hotkeys you can use. Um, C and V are obviously going to be the most important ones. Uh, if you want to rotate something horizontally, it's going to be Shift H. Okay. Same thing goes with uh, vertically, it's Shift V. So those are some more basic commands. Now, when you're stacking a brick, you're literally just, you know, it's just, you're just drawing bricks, okay? So if you were gonna come through and, and I'm just gonna erase that real fast. Unfortunately, you don't have like a delete thing. You have to actually manually erase it. But let's say you were gonna do just, you know, a basic letter. There's an A, okay? Now down here, let me get off track here. Down here, it shows you all the letters you can use and it goes all the way to different commands. Now, keep in mind, Stuff like left double quotation marks on your keyboard, it's not going to come up that way. It's going to be this one, just a regular standard quotation mark. So don't get these two confused because you won't be able to find them. <laughs> so let's go back here. So we're at letter A. Now these are just basic. You can start doing things like this to kind of, you know, make them connect a little better. Uh, make him rounded okay you can make it a little fancier and come over here and put like a round on the inside all right so that that kind of gives you a basic letter you can preview it you can i usually put this up as high as it will go you can actually see it and come over here shift a and there's your a okay now that's that's pretty basic now if you notice over here there's a big gap okay from from here to here so that is because I this is the starting point. So if you take your select tool and you can pull it right over there, okay? Come back over here, preview, it's right there, boom. Now, another thing to keep in mind is your spacing. So there are guidelines, you can go to menu, you can go to view and you can grab guidelines here, okay? This shows you your right and your top. Now this top, Wherever you set it will be the, the top for your entire font. This one, however, is only 
per letter. So if you want a space in between, like a small space, you can leave it one tile over. Um, if you want them a little closer, you can pull it in. Generally, if you're using a font where you're actually typing, you're going to want to keep that space. If you're doing a font that's pictures, I would suggest pulling it over. And it does have a little bit of a snap too, so they can get it closed. But uh, that way it centers better. But for actual letters, you're going to want to keep that apart. So that's that's basic stuff. I mean, you can go from there and just kind of create whatever. Now, another got another option here. Um, now, let's say you want to combine some of these. So let's pick another one. I don't like that one. Let's let's go something else I like to do. This is this is just my personal preference, but I like to stretch this out so I can kind of see a little bit more. It takes up a big chunk of the screen, but I can see. Um, Now, on, on top of this one up here is my bricks. Now, unfortunately, you can't see that right now. Let me see if I can adjust that for you. I'm going to pull this down, and we're going to pull me over here. Okay, so you have my bricks. Now, these are all the bricks that you have used or created, okay? So anytime you make something, it's going to pop up here. Now, you got to be careful with this because if you have too many in here, it will actually slow down the server. So when you try to save it, it won't save. The limit is actually pretty high, so you don't have to worry about it, especially if you're using just basic blocks, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so let's say you're gonna grab this bad boy right here, uh, and you wanna combine it with this one, okay? This little upper left corner. Now to, to do that, you can come over here to expert mode, click it, you'll see that it highlights, and then you click Shift 3, and now you see how you have a stacking little emblem next to your pin. And you can come over here. We can't see that one. We're going to grab this one here, and boom. Okay, so now you have something that's actually stacked. And you could do a lot of different things with this and make bricks that you wouldn't have before normally. You could do a lot with that. It makes it more creative. But then we're going to go a step even further. Now this is where the advance comes in. This mechanic is a little harder to find. And this is one of those tools, like I said in the beginning, that you're not going to find anywhere. Now you have a limit of 16 squares that you can mess with to do this. Now this is called compounding bricks. Okay. Now, like I said, it's 16 tiles. Okay doesn't have to be a square, it's 16 tiles. So you can do eight across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can make something like that, or you know, up and down, um, or you can make them just four, or you know, anything within 16, okay? Now, what I mean by that is, let's say you wanted to make a brick, a little more complex of a brick. So you come over here, and we're gonna, we're going to just kind of create something really fast. Whatever. Just just a random assortment of bricks here. So now that we have this random assortment, what you do is you can highlight these 16 tiles and then hit Shift G. And now it's right there. It pops that whole tile in there. So now you have a brick that is custom to what you want. Now you can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, sometimes you'll have to, if you have to get a little creative, uh, you can, you know, fix them up. Now, what's important to know, like I mentioned before, is that you can fill this up, this My Bricks, and you can end up with a whole bunch of bricks on there that will slow down your server. So imagine you have the entire alphabet, numbers, whatever, whatever you do for font, and they all have these four, say you have a, uh, just a ton of these 16 brick compound set up, it is not gonna be able to save. Unfortunately, the servers are very limited to just a whole mess of these bricks, so it's not gonna be able to save. So what you can do is is a couple things. One, you can go through this, your my bricks, anything that's unused, just pop them out here and then erase them. Actually, we're gonna do this first. You're gonna pop them out there and then erase them and they disappear from your, your bricks, okay? 
once you got enough of those removed, you can save it, and it usually works. Um, the other trick is is try not to use too many of these 16 bricks. Now, I like to use a 4x4 just to get an idea of what this is. And so let me give you an example here. Uh, let's say we do something like, oh, we'll stick this down here. And then we'll we'll erase this. All right. And then right there. Okay. So that's the brick I got here. Now, if I were to make this, I'd have to, I'd grab this whole 16 brick and it would press shift G. And now you have this one. Now it's still set up in this the 16, the 4x4 format. And that's using a lot of a lot of memory space for the server. So there is a way to get around that. And what that is, is if you look at these bricks, you can see that, and obviously you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with this, but you can see that like this brick right here, this little section here, we use this already. That's this one right here, okay? And if you look at this one, it's almost like a diamond at an angle. And if you come over here, that's this one right here. So you can just stick that right there. Then you have this, upper right L shape, which is right here. And then you have, if you look at this whole four piece right here, you have this bottom right corner. And you can take that, shift G, and now you have the exact same one, only using four bricks rather than 16. That alone is gonna save you a lot of memory. I mean, we just, just cut it out by a quarter, a fraction of what we did before. So that's gonna save you a lot more a lot more memory. Now something else you can do, let's say that you wanted to you wanted to create maybe just one line, right? Now you're let's let's kind of imagine this that we're still using the four by four. We just want this line on the side on the first column. Now in order to do that we have to because if I were to just grab this like this, it's gonna make a full brick. See? Now we have a full brick that is made up of four. Avoid these at all costs. That is an absolute waste. Now, if you press O, you can actually see the brick layout. Now, like I said, this uses a lot of bricks compared to this one. Just like this one uses four bricks when it could be just one. Okay. So now how we get around this is if you wanted to keep this one sliver, you would need to figure out where the corners are. So now when I grab this whole thing, press Shift G, I now have it, okay? There it is. Now, we don't want that little piece in the corner there, so what you do is you hold Shift, click on it, and now it pulls it up. You can let go of Shift, and now it pulls this up, and you can come over here, erase that, boom. And now you have one little column there on the side. So as you can imagine, there's a lot you can do with that. A lot, a lot of creativity you can mess around with that to create what you need. Now, another thing you can do is to save even more time than, actually, let's make this one again. I'll show you something here. All right, so let's get that back out here. So there's your column. Now, if we press, if we press O again, you can see that it's four. Like I said, it, it doesn't have to be 16 tiles in a square. It doesn't have to be four tiles in a square. You, you don't, as long as you're within 16 tiles, you are fine. So let's say I need that column. Okay, so we're gonna, we have our, turn that off there. So we have our column there. There's our four across, four down. But we just need, we just need this column. So if we erase these, or you don't have to erase them, you can just highlight the top, highlight these two here, shift G. Now you have two lines. It won't show up this way. It'll show up like how you made it. Click that one. And now you have the exact same line with one. So you can stretch them. And there's a lot you can do with stretching. Uh, if you come over here, let's grab one of these. Now this is a, what, 22 and a half degree angle. So we've got a 22 half degree angle. We'll stick uh, this one here. Okay. We'll just take these, 
shift G, and it turns this into what we had earlier. Now you'll notice that 22 degree angle turned into a 45 degree angle because we stretched it. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do with this. It's very handy. I've been able to make some really crazy things. The other option you can do is, is rather than trying to create these, these four by four, 16 bricks, is you could make your font four times bigger. And if you make it four times bigger, you're gonna be able to make, you're gonna have, you can avoid a lot of this. Uh, but that makes it a really big font. There's a lot you can do with a font that's four times bigger. I mean, you're going to be able to make a lot of stuff, a lot of little details and stuff. Um, but you get the same result when you do it this way. And plus, it's it's smaller. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, if, if I was going to make, you know, one little block like this here. But it bigger, it's going to take up 16 tiles. And that just seems like a waste to me. Like I said, the servers are limited. Um, but you're going to want to kind of keep it as simple as as, as you can uh, if you get really creative you're going to end up with a lot of these my bricks so a good rule of thumb is if you're combining multiple ones you're going to want to go through and delete the pieces now what i mean by that sometimes you're going to have to need to double things up so let's say that we wanted to get a really thin line between We want to get a really thin line between these two. So let's say we come over here. We're going to use our shift three to stack. And we're going to put this here, this here, and this here. So when I create this with shift G, it's going to make a really thin line. Okay. Whatever reason is, you might need it for just a little bit of detail. Come over here to shift G and it does not work. That is because you cannot compound compound bricks or combined bricks okay so in order to get away from that is let's say we go all right so now we're no longer comp compounded now we have just this and this you know what we're going to do one more thing so how do you get around that is we're going to come over here and we're going to put regular bricks here these this 45 degree angle and now we have no com no crossover compounded bricks okay so what we want to do is we want to create these as two separate bricks okay now if you look at this one you'll see that this is this if this was a four by four so rather than making this three bricks we're going to make it that one okay now if you're looking closer at this, there isn't any bricks available that actually look like this. It just doesn't, exa doesn't exist uh, with this little itty piece here. So, but we do have L shapes and we do have squares. Okay. So if we come over here, we could put a square here. We can do an L shape here and here. And now we have our first brick that we can add our pieces to. And we're doing this so that we can avoid a bunch of extra bricks. So we're going to take this, shift G, and now we have this one. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is we need these little pieces here. We have already cleared these out. Now we're going to leave this one in the bottom right corner so it keeps, it retains the whole X. Not that it really matter at this point. Um, we don't need these. Same thing. We're going to keep this one here. We don't need the L. We don't need this L. What we do need is this upper left corner. Okay. Still not crossing over into bricks. We technically don't need this one because this one is over here and this one is here. So that takes care of these lines. Okay. The only ones we need is this one because there's nothing up here to signify, hey, we wanted a whole four by four. You come over here, grab this whole thing, shift G. Shift again so you can delete this one. And now you have this line. Okay. Now just like you would normally shift three. You can come over here. Boom. And you now have a brick. That with a nice thin line. For whatever detail you're trying to do. So hopefully that helps you out. If you have any questions please leave a comment. I will do my best to answer. But a pretty neat tool. You just need to save it. Turn around and download it. Once it's downloaded. Just go over to your download folder, uh, right click it, 
maybe say extract to here and then it'll create a, a standard TTF file which is a true type font file double click it your computer will already know what to do with it just click install it'll pop it into your Windows type font files and then you're ready to go open up a program and it should be there waiting for you so a really neat tool if you want to get really creative and make some fonts I highly suggest Fontstruct. It does have some limitations, like I said, with server and stuff like that. Um, but with this ability to kind of easily stack bricks and create bricks and compound bricks, you can really do quite a bit with it. I mean, the sky's the limit with this thing. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, there are fonts in there. I have made fonts with pretty basic pictures, but there are fonts in here with I mean, full on the Avengers. There's actually an option here for the Avengers. It's somebody actually made the Avengers faces that are very realistic out of this font structure. Very impressive. Uh, so check it out. It's uh, making a font is something you're interested in doing. And um, have fun. Stay golden. Take care.